Every week at our worship and at other community gatherings, we share in this territorial acknowledgement and recognize our blessings of being able to live, work, and serve on this sacred land. Please take time to read this acknowledgement regularly and share it with people in our community. Thank you. Hello, my friends at St. Cuthbert's. It's Shea Marville. As you know, we are building an incredible wellness community at St. Cuthbert's. We are growing slowly, but steadily. And we are going to be introducing a new calendar that provides two virtual classes and two live classes. Again, we want to hear your feedback. We want to build a program that is truly about what our community needs. But this week, I want to introduce these resistant bands. These are fantastic for our mobility, for stretching, and for breathing. And so let's try something together. If you're at home and you're in a, you know, a little space and you're sitting down on a chair or on the floor, I want you to imagine a band in your hand you're gonna try this on Saturday when you come, right? And you're gonna breathe in and you're gonna stretch the band. And then you're gonna hold the band and then you're gonna breathe out by opening the mouth wide and release the band slowly. Breathe in. Hold, exhale. And so you do two things, well, more than two things, but one is that you are going to increase muscle mass by having resistance, right? But two, you're gonna learn how to extend the breath. And when you learn to extend the breath, you learn how to engage the parasympathetic nervous system, which allows you to relax. This is something you can do before bed. It is something you can do in the middle of the day. This is something that will increase your sense of well being because it engages your whole body. Come to a class on Saturday. Tell me how you feel. Let's keep building together.
people have engaged in Christian meditation for almost 2,000 years. Some people are able to do that by just sitting quietly, sometimes with their eyes closed, sometimes with their eyes open. Many people aren't able to do this. They aren't able to connect effectively with God by just sitting still. And for some of us, moving while meditating works much better. One way to do that is to walk in the labyrinth. We have a labyrinth now at St. Cuthbert's, and everyone is welcome to join the Venerable Jeff Ward on the first Friday of every month at 7 p.m., beginning November the 3rd, to engage in this walking meditation practice. Please join the Venerable Jeff Ward on November the 3rd at 7 p.m. and learn what it is like to walk, pray, and connect with God more deeply. For most of Christian history, people have engaged in meditation practices. If you would like to join us to be able to engage in this practice, to empty ourselves of what's going on in our lives and the world around us for at least an hour each week so that we can make room to engage more with Christ, please join us for virtual meditation on Saturdays at 11 a.m. It is hosted by the good people of Grace Anglican Church in Waterdown, but people from all over the world participate together to be able to connect with God and to be able to connect with our neighbors near and far. If you would like to engage in this practice with me, please contact me the Venerable Jeff Ward or Lori in the office, and we will get you connected so that you too can be closer to God. As many of you know, there are many people in our community who are suffering. They're unable to get enough food to eat. And through our work together, we can help to alleviate that food insecurity for them. If you're able at all, please drop off food at the church. You can do it during the week, putting it in our shopping cart, or bring it with you to church on Sunday and leave it in the cart in the narthex. And Dick and Eleanor Alcock will make sure it gets delivered to Fair Share Food Bank. You can see on the screen what they are looking for. So if you're able to bring any or all of those items as often as possible, that's greatly appreciated. Help us to help others. Thank you. I want to thank those of you who have been sending us prayer requests for people uh, in your life, people you know, who are uh, benefiting from the prayers of the people, uh, prayers from our prayer team. Uh, if you would like to ask for prayers for people, please either send an email to Lori or myself or go to our website and right on our front page, you can click on the prayer request form. It only takes a few seconds. You can fill it in. It will come to Lori and I and we will make sure that um, those prayers get included. They can be prayers for people who are suffering or struggling, people who are sick, people who are in hospital, but also uh, people who are trying to celebrate some wonderful aspects of their lives, whether it's anniversaries or birthdays or whatever it might be. So please send us those requests and we will make sure to include those uh, prayers in our weekly prayers and in our ongoing prayers. God bless all of you. I want to say thank you to all of you who have continued to invest in the uh, mission work and ministry work that we do in our community through St. Cuthbert's. We appreciate the fact that you've been able to continue donations. In some cases, some of you have been able to increase those donations, and we really appreciate that. You can still uh, make donations by uh, mailing checks. You can use e-transfers by sending those to the uh, parish uh, email account. You can go through our website and click on the donate button and make donations there. If you are uh, not on PAG, we would love it if you could join that pre-authorized giving. Uh, just let Lori know and she will help you set that up. Uh, it certainly helps us and it helps you too so that you can budget uh, donations that you make to the church. Um, if you uh, are already making those donations and you're able to find a way to increase them, we really appreciate that because the, uh, the ministry continues moving forward. And uh, for some folks, this pandemic has been a tough time 
And for those people, uh, it's been harder for them to continue making the contributions that they normally make to our ministry. So if you're able to increase those donations in any way, that would be a wonderful opportunity uh, for you to be able to make an even greater impact than you already are making. So thanks very much to all of you. Please stand as we sing, Lift High the Cross.
Good morning, everyone. Thank, Good morning. thank you for joining us this morning, and thank you to those who are joining us on the live stream as well. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. We are grateful to be able to gather and worship on the native lands of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, Ashinaabe Nation, Huron-Wendat, and the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, covered by the two treaties that remain in force. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord, Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world, more, give us this bread that he may live in us and we in him, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And please, could the uh, children and youth uh, come up as they prepare to head out for uh, service? God, we pray that you will bless the youth as they uh, spend time th this morning with Anna, as they get to encounter you and see you in their lives and feel your presence in their hearts, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Please take some time to prepare yourself for worship and as, re as you reflect and ask God to uh, be with you throughout this service. from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us 
once lived among them and the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses. And we were by nature children of wrath, like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By the grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks, Thanks be to be God. God. because of their sins. They abhorred all manner of food and drew near to death's door. Give thanks to the Lord that's love and is Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble. And he delivered them from their distress. He sent forth his word and healed them, and saved them from the grave. Give thanks to the Lord, God's love and yours Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy and the wonders he does for his children. Let them offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving and tell of his acts with shouts of joy. Give thanks to Praise 
The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of God be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. The Gospel of Christ. Let us pray. Dear God, may we hear your word and live in it all that we do as we walk in the ways of Jesus Christ filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. The Library of Books... I know I already got your attention, didn't I, Nancy? The library of books that we call the Bible is a major problem for some people. Some people find the Bible objectionable. Some people find the Bible very objectionable. Some say it is because it contains a lot of violence, a lot of gratuitous violence. God seems to tell people to do awful things to others in the Bible destroying entire communities, stoning people to death, shunning people, and all that animal sacrifice. Select scripture quotes have been used throughout history to justify the oppression of indigenous peoples, apartheid, slavery, anti-Semitism, the subjugation of women, the persecution of people who identify as LGBTQ. And in many passages, the Bible seems to paint an unflattering picture of God. God is often portrayed as vengeful, retributive, unforgiving, even petty and transactional. This transactional nature can be found in today's gospel passage. This is the one that contains one of the most popular verses in the Bible for many Christians. John 3.16. It's so popular that people even just say things like John 3.16, or they put John 3.16 on placards at sporting events, 
as if everybody will know what actually John 3.16 is and what it means. Let me just repeat to you what actually it says in that passage. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. Now, a lot of people believe that or understand that verse to mean something like this. If I believe in Jesus, I will enjoy e eternal life in heaven. If I don't believe in Jesus, I will perish and go to hell. Now, I don't understand why many people who interpret the verse that way think it's so wonderful. Personally, I find the idea that God would punish or condemn people for not believing in Jesus to be very troubling. And I struggle to even understand what is meant by believing in Jesus. And here I stand before you as a very well-trained priest. Even the disciple Peter, this makes me feel a little bit better, who was able to say that Jesus was the Messiah, the Christ, the Son of God, didn't fully understand what that meant. And notice that if we read on in today's passage, we hear this. God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. That the world might be saved, it says. Not just some select human, some specially chosen, but the world as in everyone and everything. And in the passage from Paul's letter that David read for us this morning, from his letter to the Ephesians, we, he said this, but God who is rich in mercy out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together in Christ. By grace you have been saved. And then he goes on to say, this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God. So according to Paul, being saved maybe has very little to do with what we do or what we believe. It has more to do with the fact that it's God's gracious gift to us. And that is certainly the God that I experience in my own life. One that is loving, forgiving, including, and caring. A God who we come to know through Jesus, the incarnation God in our world. So how do we reconcile this image of God with the bloodthirsty, vengeful God who has to be appeased with animal sacrifices in other places in our scriptures? Well, I think that we start by acknowledging that the Bible, the canon of the inspired writings of the Jewish and Christian peoples, was written and compiled by humans who didn't fully understand God or God's creation. Those people were trying, and they wanted to express it desperately, but didn't fully understand. It's sometimes described, the Bible, as the word of God in the words of people. Consider this. If God inspired each of us here, all of us here, to write about God's relationship with God's creation, wouldn't we do that filtered through our own knowledge and experience? What each of us would write would be different, wouldn't it? It would come from a different perspective because God doesn't just dictate for us for what we read in our scriptures. We humans must each wrestle with understanding and growing in relationship with the divine mystery we call God. And people function at various levels of spiritual consciousness. And that is true of those who wrote the books in the Bible. Some passages of Scripture demonstrate a very high level of spiritual consciousness. They're written from a place of love, and as a result, they are inclusive, compassionate, and accepting, and humble. Other passages display a rather low level of spiritual consciousness. They're written from a place of fear or competition. And these passages are often dualistic, punitive, and exclusionary. If we look at the arc of the Bible, over time, 
there seems to be a gradual increase in the overall level of spiritual consciousness. God generally seems much harsher and retributive in the oldest books and more compassionate and restorative in the youngest books. But we also see that the writers frequently will, even in those younger books, take two steps forward and one step back. We saw that in our reading today from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. They seem to get it, but then they slide back into old patterns of thinking. They see glimmers of light, as Jesus says, right? In the light, but then they slide back into darkness. And we still see this pattern in our world, in our day. Another challenge that we face when we read our scriptures today is that many of us have been told that we should interpret all passages of scripture in a literal, historical way. I don't know if you noticed the irony in what I just said. Interpret all passages literally. I'm not sure how you can interpret them if you just do it literally, but almost all of the sacred writings that make up our Bible were written by Jewish people, and they understood that any single passage of any scripture could offer several levels of meaning from the literal to the mystical. If you don't believe me, sit around with a bunch of rabbis and ask them to talk about a piece of scripture for you. This interpretive understanding was also true of Christians for hundreds of years, especially in the early church. Those early church fathers such as Origen, Cyril of Alexandria, Augustine, Gregory the Great, and others wrote about multiple ways of interpreting each passage of Scripture. Just as one example, one such system holds that there are seven senses of Scripture. And these are literal, historical, allegorical, moral, symbolic, eschatological, and archetypal. I will one day preach you a sermon just about those seven senses, but it won't be today. This broad and deep understanding of scriptural interpretation changed during the Reformation when the focus in many Protestant traditions became the literal interpretation only. But please note that one of the great Anglican theologians, Richard Hooker, tried to teach us all that there are at least three key aspects to being a Christian, certainly in the Anglican church, as he would say, what he called the three-legged stool. Scripture, as it is written, tradition, as we have practiced it, and reason. We have to use the beautiful brains that God has given us so that we can better understand how to read scripture, and how to pray in a way that will get us closer to God. Now, unfortunately, the literal interpretation is probably the least spiritually helpful of all ways for us to read scripture. It often gets in the way of sacred writings being transformational. Symbol and metaphor can help us to explore spiritual ideas in ways that are dynamic and life-changing. Scripture can be very problematic if it's only understood literally, and by the way, we could debate for weeks and months and years, we do, about how to read something literally. But literalism is discredited even by the Bible itself. I mean, how can we take every verse literally when the Bible contains more than one origin story? Which way did the world, the universe, begin? There are multiple histories of Israel. There are four Gospels, and they often present the same story in diverse ways. And let's not forget the parables of Jesus that present spiritual wisdom in indirect, symbolic, and metaphorical ways. For instance, Jesus says this, The kingdom of God is like... And then he tells us many parables. So he says the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed, a pearl of great uh, price, a yeast, a treasurer. If it was literal, which one of those would it be? We cannot change the text, but we can certainly alter how we approach it. So perhaps the best way for us to understand Scripture is to start by asking ourselves, how did Jesus use Scripture? After all, who would be better for us to emulate than God in the world? 
When quoting or discussing the Hebrew scriptures, Jesus picked and chose his passages. There were books that he never quoted, and he seemed to disagree with many passages. Please, take note. Read through the Gospels. You will see this. He says over and over again, you have heard that it was said. And then he says, but I say to you, Now, he did not quote punitive, exclusive, or retributive passages, and he didn't treat Scripture as if it was all equally inspired. Jesus taught and lived, obviously, as God, at the highest level of spiritual consciousness. I think that's why people often didn't understand him. Even those who spent years with him, day in and day out, didn't always understand him. They didn't always have eyes to see or ears to hear what he was trying to teach them. Loving, forgiving, and including everyone just didn't make sense to people who came from a tribal culture where justice was based on reward and punishment. Sadly, there are still many people functioning at that lower level of spiritual consciousness, which is one of the reasons why the Bible is still misused If we approach the Bible the way Jesus did, focusing on the passages steeped in God's love and light, and we view it through the lens of how Jesus lived and taught, our scriptures offer us glimpses of the divine that can transform us into the people who God hopes we will be. We become more and more able to love our neighbors despite their many foibles and faults. We'll even become more and more able to appreciate and love our scriptures despite their many foibles and faults. We become able to see the gifts in passages like John 3.16 because we can grow past a lower level of spiritual consciousness with interpretations like if you believe the right thing, God will reward you, and if you don't, God will punish you to a level that says, God so loves the world that all the world is saved through God's free gift. The latter is a much higher level, a much more Christ-like level of spiritual consciousness. It's even worthy of being placed on a placard at a sporting event, although it's pretty long, so it may not fit and work very well on TV. And as we state in our own baptismal services, Christians are called to grow into the full stature of Christ. To grow, that means to evolve, to get better at, and to have Christ-like consciousness. The Bible can help us to grow in love, wisdom, and understanding if we approach it through the lens of the Christ and in the manner of the Christ. Amen. Please stand. Let us join together in singing our hymn, Christ Be Our Light.
Let us affirm our faith as we say together, we believe in God, who is love and who has given the earth to all people. We believe in Jesus Christ, who came to heal us and to free us from all forms of oppression. We believe in the Spirit of God, who works in and through all who are turned towards the truth. We believe in the community of faith, which is called to be at the service of all people. We believe in God's power to transform and transfigure, fulfilling the promise of a new heaven and a new earth where justice and peace will flourish. Amen. Prayers of the people. You speak, God. You always speak. If we will but listen, all we need to do is pause and turn our attention to the song singing from the heavens and whispering in the winds, to the flight of the dove and the touch of its wings on our heads to the giggling of the water and the mark it leaves in our hearts. By your incarnation and your birth in poverty, by your baptism, your fasting, and your trials in the desert, O oh Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, have mercy. By your agony in the garden, by your cross and passion, by your death and burial, by your resurrection and your ascension, by the gift of your Holy Spirit, O oh Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, have mercy. In times of trouble and in times of well-being, at the hour we die and on the day of your glory, O oh Lord, Hear our prayer. Lord, have mercy. Deliver us from war and violence, from hardness of heart and from contempt of your love and your promises. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, have mercy. Enlighten our lives with your word that in it we may find our way and our hope, O oh Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, have mercy. Assist your people in every land. Govern them in peace and justice. Defend them from the enemies of life. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are suffering or struggling in body, mind, or spirit, remembering especially those made known to us. Anne, Sean, Michael, Maureen, Marilyn, Marjorie, Peg, Christopher, Bernadette, Robin, Jamie, Sandy, Bruce, Corrine, Jan, Cordelia, Viola, Yvonne, Janice, Ed, Adiola, and Scott, Lauren, Layla, Fata, 
Anna, Sarah, Amanda, Mary, David, Darcy, Milton, Jane, Leslie, Irene, Harry, Andrea, Colin, Danielle, Carrie, Maria, Percy, Brian, Peggy, and Keith. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are dying and for those who mourn the death of those they love, especially those made known to us, the Crichton family, and those who have died in the Ukraine, in Israel, in Gaza, Jackie, rest in eternal grant, rest in eternal peace. Grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetually shine upon them, O Lord. Hear our prayer. Lord, have mercy. O Lord, our God, may the light and hope of your Son's incarnation reassure our hearts that you are among us, that you hear our prayer, that you will be with us always, even to the end of the age. In the name of Jesus, who walks with us in our wilderness all of our days. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. God welcomes all of us as sinners and invites all of us to this table. So let us now confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. The infinite grace of God have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life with Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand as you're able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please share a sign of God's loving peace with each other. You folks up there, wherever you may be on the live stream, peace to everybody here. If you come with someone, don't hesitate to do more than just wave. In just a moment, our, the offering plate will come forward. If you would like to make a donation to the mission work we do through St. Cuthbert's, please feel free to do so. If you need to, wave down the person with the plate as they're coming by. Wherever you may be on the live stream, if you would like to donate to our mission, please go to our website and click on the big donate button and you can make a donation. If you're in Canada, you will receive a tax receipt. As we prepare the altar for our feast together, let us sing our hymn, O Love, How Deep, how broad, how high.
Let us continue by praying together the prayer over the gifts. Let us do that by saying these words together. God of mercy and compassion, your word calls us home to faith and love. Accept all we offer you this day in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. So come you who have much faith and you who have little, you who have been here often and you who have not been for a long time or ever before, you who have tried to follow and all of us who have failed at times in our own way. Jesus invites everyone, all of God's children to this table to receive the sacrament of love poured out in this Eucharistic feast with no exception. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. We give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was tempted in every way, yet did not sin. By his grace, we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all who have served you in every age, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. give thanks to you, Lord, our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in those last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night that he was handed over to suffering and death, the death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of our faith. We remember his death. We proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we made acceptable in him may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior taught us, let us pray as we sing together.
we break this bread. Communion in Christ's body once broken. Let your church be the wheat which bears its fruit in dying. If we have died with him, we shall live with him. If we hold firm, we shall reign with him. These are the gifts of God for the family of God. Thanks be to God. Now let us pray our prayer that brings us all together within God's creation. We receive you, Cosmic Christ. We welcome your presence in us and together proclaim our love for you. With the saints, we worship you. With the angels, we adore you. With your whole church, we proclaim your reign. Fill us with the awareness that we are all one in you. Amen. Everyone who is present here today is welcome to receive communion at the Lord's table. Just follow the people ahead of you up the main aisle. Please sanitize your hands as you come forward. You can gather at the rail standing or kneeling. Please reach out with your hands to receive the bread. You'll be offered bread and wine. You can take one or both. If you'd rather not receive either of the elements, but you'd like a blessing, come forward crossing your arms and you will receive a blessing from God. Wherever you may be out on our live stream, please take this time to pray and know that you are with us in spirit.
Please stand as you're able. And let us conclude our meal together as we pray these words together. Giver of life, you enlighten all who come into the world. Praise your holy name. May our journey in life shine with a star's delight. May our days and our years weave together a wondrous tapestry. May our unfolding story dance with the grace of every blessing. Always and ever may we rest in God. Always and ever may God rest in us. Amen. Please be seated for just a few announcements. All right, first of all, I just want to let you all know we have a new communications committee. You're going to be hearing more from them in the coming days and weeks. And one of the ways you're going to be hearing from them, and for those of you who are on the communications committee, I just want you to know at 8 o'clock, and I'm about to do it again now, I'm going to be um, uh, on your behalf letting people know that as part of our new announcement format, we're going to be letting you all know who's on the communications committee as well, so that you'll be aware of who's trying to help us to communicate more effectively in more new ways, in better ways. One of those is going to be uh, a, an email that we'll all be getting once a week that will have all the announcements, services, things that we uh, think people need to know. Um, please, as you're receiving it, um, let us know how it's working for you because it will be something new that we're trying. Let us know how we might be able to make it better. So certainly you can talk to anybody on the communications committee and you can say, hey, um, I would love to you know, add this or have this changed or whatever. That we are going to be looking for people to offer content for this information that we're sending out as well. So if you happen to be one of the people who is responsible for that content, we need to get it from people by Monday at noon each week so that it can go out on Tuesday to everybody in the parish. So please make sure that you keep that in mind. In our first letters, we'll make that clear to people, but please, please um, help us out with that. All of our regular Bible studies are continuing on Tuesday nights, Wednesday mornings, Thursday mornings for our bilingual folks. Morning prayer continues on Friday mornings at 9 a.m., would you like to come forward and talk about the, mi uh, the mindfulness sessions? Yeah. See, I even, I even said it wrong. Wise mindedly. See, that's what I want you to say. Oh, good morning, everyone, again. We are continuing. I think you're tired of hearing me talk about wellness, but we Everybody, have to, never. We have to talk about it. We're continuing our wellness sessions on Saturdays at 2 p.m. Everyone is welcome. And we are, in April, introducing a new calendar of wellness events, which are um, mobile yoga, mindfulness, and doing some other things around stress reduction and loneliness. And you'll see, as we expand what we're doing, uh, there's going to be more opportunity for you to either volunteer and be a part, or to just attend and look after your stress and look after your physical body. And now we have partnered with our youth and our youth group will become wellness educators. Uh, the ones who are participating, they're going to be doing a 40 hour wellness uh, educational process. So we are expanding, keep listening and please come on Saturday. I even sometimes bring food. So, and it's, it'll, it'll be vegetarian and non-vegetarian. Yes? Okay. <laughs> I unfortunately was unable to attend uh, the session where Shay brought the food, but it's all I heard about was how great the food was, and I was thinking, of course, I had to miss that day, didn't I? So, 
In addition to that part of our wellness, uh, we're also going to continue with our labyrinth walks once a month. So the next one's April 5th at 7 p.m. So please join us for that. And as Shay said, we're going to be offering even more, uh, we'll call them programs, but they're going to be activities, events, things like that to help all of us be stronger physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. To help out our creation that God has offered to us, we're going to be uh, engaging in our annual Earth Cleanup Day on April the 20th, so please get that on your calendars. It starts at 9 a.m., and we're going to be servicing two parks again. We're going to be servicing Dunvegan, which is up that away uh, on Devon, and you just go down a little bit on Devon. And the other one is Ardley, which is the park, which is down here on Maple Grove before you get to Lakeshore. So please watch for the sign-up sheet. Please come and help us. I admit that last year it was a rainy, wet, dismal day, but lots of people showed up. We had a wonderful time, and my gosh, did we ever collect a lot of garbage. So please come and help us if you can. And also, we are planning to have a trivia night in April. It's just a get-together fun time, and uh, you're going to be hearing more details about that in the coming week. So please, when you see it, put it on your calendar. Please come. It's just a way for us to have some fun together because we're not having enough fun and also for us to get to know each other better in our community. So please, please come and join us that evening. And as I said, you'll be seeing more about that in the coming week. For now, can you please stand as we are going to join together in singing our closing hymn, Lo, God is here, let us adore. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God. Please, everybody, join us in the hall for lots of food and getting together. <laughs> <laughs>